how to take epic night photos with your Samsung device. The first and the most important thing of course is the timing and the light conditions. The best light for night photos is just after sunset when they turn on the street lights but you still have a little bit of light in the sky. Here we just missed the moment but I still can show you the best settings. The first option is good if you want to take a photo of somebody or you're in a hurry and you don't have time. Just open the camera and swipe to night mode. By default the exposure is set to one second so the most important thing is to change it to max. In that way you're getting the best quality. When you handheld the phone the maximum exposure will be three seconds. So let the car start going and we'll snap the photo. It's mostly good but far from perfect. First let's swipe to the photo mode. There are a couple of settings we have to change. The first one is the megapixels. We cannot shoot at night with 200 megapixels. The Samsung sensor is amazing but it has a lot of small megapixels. When you lower the resolution Samsung is combining the pixels in bigger ones and those bigger ones are able to capture more light and your image is way cleaner than if you shoot 200 megapixels. But there is a better option. We have to install the expert row application from Samsung you can find it in the Galaxy Store and here you have a hybrid resolution. You have the 12 megapixels and you have 24 megapixels. That is the perfect resolution with the perfect quality. The One X lens can be a bit tight in some situations. For the test I'll screw the Freewell 18mm lens because I want to capture the whole square in great quality. In challenging light conditions the 200 megapixels are performing poorly. Switching to 50 megapixels improve the image but the best quality you get when you come down to 24 or 12 megapixels. You can hardly see a difference difference between the two resolutions but the quality jump at night is massive. In the expert row we open the settings and we make sure that we are filming in RAW and JPEG at the same time. The RAW file is bigger and has more colors in it. Definitely the adaptive pixel has to be turned on and now we go back to take some photos. Here I will put the white balance on auto we are filming RAW and after that on the editing program we can change it. The next setting we have to change is the ISO. Here we go manually to the lowest one. 50 is the lowest we can go manually. Then we go to the speed. At night the perfect speed is between 1 and 2 seconds. Unfortunately the preview of the Samsung doesn't show you what you're filming. You have to experiment. Your best orientation is to use the EV. When the EV is on zero that means your exposure is perfect. If it's plus one is a little bit overexposed. If it's minus one is a little bit underexposed. Let's take a test photo with the current settings. 1 second of exposure and ISO 50. We have to wait the phone to process the photo. That lens is letting so much light in that it's impossible to go more than 0.5 seconds if you are recording with street lights. The way to do it is to use an ND filter. Right here I have an ND filter from Freewell. It's their photography filter ND128. In our scenario the best will be to use ND32 but unfortunately I don't have it with me so we'll increase the exposure to something like 8 to 15 seconds. Open the expert row and snap the photo. And here I made a huge mistake because when you press the phone you're introducing shake. You have to turn on the timer to 2 seconds like that you press the phone and the phone doesn't shake when it starts taking the photo. When you do such long exposures any shake is your enemy. Next I'll show you 3 important things. How to make the people disappear when you film at busy location. Second what is the best issue to take photos with your S24 Ultra and third how to edit the photos. Here is how it works. When you snap the photo in the normal photo mode all people are frozen and the location doesn't look nice at all. To make it more professional we have to place the phone on a tripod and take the picture with 4 to 15 seconds of exposure. Everyone who moves while you take the picture will become a ghost. The longer is the exposure the less people you will have. Next I will check how far I can push the ISO. I took photos from ISO 50 to ISO 3200. Let's see how far we can push the sensor. First we start with the ultra wide angle lens. The best quality we get at ISO 50. The difference between 100 and 250 is not that noticeable. When you jump to ISO 400 the grain is more prominent but still looks pretty decent. After 640 the image slowly starts losing quality and the worst performance as expected you get at ISO 3200. Next we have the One X lens that has the best performance. With that lens the difference between ISO 50 and ISO 400 is less noticeable. After we go over 640 it is becoming more prominent with more artifacts but even ISO 3200 looks usable. The best application to use is Lightroom. It has free version, it has paid version. The free version is more than enough to edit your night photos. Let's edit this photo because it will be more challenging. We go to edit, light and here we boost the exposure.
how to know how much to push the exposure. Check the histogram. The left side are the shadows, the right side are the highlights. So we push the exposure until we start mostly touching the highlights. If I push too much, the street light is becoming like crazy. So something like that. If you don't have the histogram, here is how to add it. Go to the three dot menu, view options, and here from no overlay, change it to histogram. Let's dial a little bit down the highlights because here the tails are a little bit blown. Scroll down to the shadows, we increase the shadows and we darken a bit the blacks. Next we jump to the colors and we need the color mixer. Usually when you film at night the street lights are extremely yellow. To remove that yellow tint we just go to yellow and reduce the saturation. We need maybe around minus 30, minus 40 and we boost the luminance a little bit. Next we jump to the detail and we have to reduce a little bit the noise. When you shoot with a small sensor it's completely normal to have a little bit of noise. So let's boost the noise reduction. Here is before and after. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you in the next one. Bye!